Mercedes had reached out to the Tata Motors in 1950s for a collaboration. Suman Mulgaukar was a chairman, very eminent automobile engineer. They were ready for a collaboration, but Tata Motors did not get an opportunity. And the Tatas had given the keys to the Tata Mercedes manufactured car to the Commerce Secretary of the Government of India, saying, please use these cars for one year. Six cars they gave. If you like the quality, please give us permission to manufacture cars in India. It is recorded that the Commerce Secretary and Mr. Krishna Menon, who was then uh, a very eminent uh, civil servant in the Indian government, used those cars, appreciated them for one year, but returned the keys back without any permission to manufacture cars in India. 30 years later, again, there was a collaboration possible with the Honda. Again, the government, then it was, I think, the Rajiv Gandhi government, for some legal reason, did not give permission. But when Maruti came into existence, Shrimati Gandhi invited Mr. Suman Mulgaukar, who was the head of Tata Motors, to be chairman of Maruti, so that the Tata's expertise can be used in the success story, which was in the making, which is Maruti. I'm sharing these stories because it's an audience of business and bureaucrats, so both sides of the audience can enjoy, and business and bureaucracy are always the two ends of the spectrum. But there's always synergies which can be exploited. And there are always lessons which each side can learn from the others. And today India has matured where the synergies are more predominant than the antagonism. And that's something we need to be proud of. So in the 1980s, Tata trucks were most popular. In fact, people had to wait for 10 years to get a Tata truck. Not because the Tatas could not manufacture more trucks. But the government has said that the Tatas can manufacture only 5,000 trucks a year. Even if they want to manufacture more, they cannot manufacture. Even though there is a 10-year waiting, we do not want you to manufacture more trucks. I mean, the millennials should know why India did not succeed. Because it's not that we didn't have the capacity. But we were experimenting with a form of economic development which did not succeed even in the star performer of the USSR on which our economy was kind of modeled. When the USSR collapsed, we realized that this is not a model which will sustain itself. At that time, trucks had what was called the non-synchronous gearbox. It was very difficult to change the gear. Suman Mulgaukar wanted to introduce synchronous gearboxes, but they were not made in India. They had to be imported. So his senior committee said, no sir, we don't want to import. The customer is not going to pay for synchronous gearboxes. We will have to bear the cost. We don't want to do that. The final word is always with the boss, whether it's business or bureaucracy. So Suman Mulgaukar chaired that committee and said, how many of you have driven a truck for three days? Nobody raised their hands. Okay, one day, have you driven a truck for one day? They said, no, sir. You should drive a truck for one day to know why I want to introduce synchronous gearboxes because that truck driver is driving that truck 365 days a year, 12 hours a day on the rugged roads and the ghats, on the highways and the innerways. And I want to make his, his experience of driving a Tata truck far more enjoyable. He may not pay me the additional expense I indulge in, but customer affection is what we should focus on. Today, the word customer affection has come into the management jargon. 40 years earlier, Suman Mulgaukar was talking about customer affection. In 1970s, the Tata trucks were in short supply and there was a 40,000 premium in the market. Again, Suman Mulgaukar's colleague said that let's raise the prices because we are not getting permission to manufacture more trucks. At least let's raise the prices. And Mulgaukar said, profits should come from productivity and not by raising prices in a favorable market. It's a vision statement for modern management thinkers. It takes a lot of statesmanship to think like this and yet be successful financially and in the eyes of the customer. I guess these are the lessons in customer development, product development, pricing development, the core objectives of business. We've all grown up studying great thinkers, Michael Porter, Philip Kotler, all the Western thinkers. But I believe India has come of age where we need to study Indian businesses and see that in this culture, how businesses can be successfully done. At least as a business author, that has been my endeavor. And all my three books have focused on the Indian way of business and how successful strategies can be drafted.